Okay, so yeah, you you were in the White House. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that okay. in comparison to what has happened to you now, where you're here yeah. talking about the love it. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what if? Yeah, I mean, look, I had. <laughs> that was a long time ago. Things True. have changed yeah. for me. Yeah, a lot since those days. How do you like? You, do you like being a podcaster more? I think. Look, I think that there are a lot of people who were great at being in government and like being officials and then they go on and do interesting different things after drawing on that experience building new experiences i feel like mike huckabee mike huckabee great example that's incredible entertainer uh oliver north obviously prolific career in government and then after government just lots of examples like that he armed sports he yeah for sure he armed uh you know uh, brown folks Mm-hmm. So that's that's you know liberation. Sure. That's what he was doing. Sure, that's a that's a that's let Oliver North give autonomy to brown paramilitaries. I'm just saying. The clapping really makes yeah. that. I can just see the emojis in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for me, I feel like in hindsight, uh, I was a bit like a monkey with a suit on. Like, what's he gonna type? You know, like I just I'm I'm glad I had that experience. I learned a lot. I'm proud of a lot of what I got to work on. But I think I was always fighting the fact that, like, I don't know how to function in a fucking serious place. I I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to show up and be serious in a meeting. It's never been my uh, my skill set. Yeah, no, I feel that, which is why you would have been significantly better in the Trump White House. Oh, no, I I, um, yeah, like. (laughs) If, if I was like, it would be cool. I do think like being shameless, like having absolutely no yeah. values m- until, until the kind of existential, un- until the kind of like existential panic and grief hits you in various ways, which it hits all of these people, except for like the true sociopaths, which are probably rare. Like it must be fun for a you while. Is rare just, in politics? I don't know. <laughs> I think like, like full, like, I think like, I, yeah, I think, I think there are people who do completely heinous things and do their best to push it down but like like rudy giuliani is not a sociopath he's fucked up by his so choices you, you yeah. think the day after the hair dye and, and the farting oh you think so that, you, that you think he gets sad for him i i think his light like i think we are watching like the pathos of rudy giuliani all over the place like he's we he is not a person who doesn't feel the, the effects yeah. of his bad choices yeah. I mean, his really? life is a shambles well, he's a that, miserable sad man but that's not necessarily like him practicing like him having a conscious or anything i feel like that's just him literally uh recognizing that he's now fucked as a consequence of working in the trump administration and i this is gonna get like real true crime i'm a true crime geek Mm -hmm. now i've been watching a lot of murder mysteries so i'm a bit of an expert in criminology for sure yeah and uh you know you see this spiral pattern that giuliani felt shame about what he had done in that room you see it in a lot of these, uh, you know, interrogations where, like, you'll see, like, a true sociopath who's not even remorseful at all about what they did, you know, double homicide, whatever, but more so the only time that they demonstrate any sort of, like, reflection is when they realize that, um, you know, you reap what you sow. The yeah. consequences are coming for you individually, and it's very narcissistic. And I think a lot of people in the Trump administration probably feel that way. And those, are, and you know, plenty of them also pulled the uh, pulled the parachute like right at the last, like final hour, where they were like, "Actually, you know, this is bad." It's like, oh wow, that's that's cool. How brave! It, there's that. Yeah. No. I look. I don't. I I do not presume to know the ratio of sociopaths to just sort of like. <laughs> you know, (laughs) vile, narcissistic creeps. Um, It reminds me of like, there was this uh, like influencer who gave an interview about how like she didn't realize she was rich until she like had kids and was an adult. She like did that apology tour for like, I'm really sorry. I didn't understand that I was a rich person from the Upper East Side. And I think about that with like all of these Trump people who kind of pulled the ripcord right at the end. It's like, hey, like your journey is not impressive to us your discovery of this realization is not in is not a great moral stand we were here yeah but that's for normal people because the reality is i think a lot of the demons in media are still gonna celebrate these people with open arms and welcome them in i 
I uh, went to the uh, White House Correspondents' Dinner weekend like a couple years back with the Young Turks, back mm-hmm. when I used to work with them. And they had all of these, you know, they had all these get-togethers, these gatherings. First of all, Washington, D.C., no disrespect, sorry, but like literally the worst place on the do, planet. Do you think that I, do oh. you think that I have a lot of like, I mean, I don't know. Self-esteem I just, from I just like your you thoughts on this District of Columbia, and I don't How mean do like I don't mean for the, the locals. I mean like literally just. But there no is no disrespect, this, but the worst place on the planet. It's just like not the locals. Obviously, like you know, shouts out to all the people that live there from Washington D.C. I'm sorry that you had to live there, but yeah. I just I feel like there is an aura of evil when you when you step out of the airport, and you're just like you just hit in the face. Like when you go to New Jersey. There's a horrible stench. Okay, you get out of fucking Newark Airport, and you're like, "What the fuck is going on?" It's just, and for DC, it's like there's an aura of evil in the air, and I feel like you recognize it because, like, pound for pound, this is like where all of the most evil people gather. Think yeah. about it. I mean, I'm 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 open to it. I'm open. To, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. Um, I definitely uh. I felt it when I went back after Trump. I think I felt the difference. Yeah. Like you may be, I'm look, I know you're, what you're saying is, you know, that, that it feels this way all the time. I felt a real difference when you landed in DC, like, and the Trump administration was in office and all of these like young liberals and progressives who had come because they wanted to make a difference were like fleeing, <laughs> fleeing <laughs> to find jobs in, in state governments or elsewhere. Yeah. You really felt like you were in like a kind of, capital in the hunger game situation where yeah. like it was just like I technically i did go during the trump oh, it was during trump yeah 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 it, though what what disgusted me truly was like kellyanne conway walking into a party you've been in those situations you know these dudes that are like supposedly duking it out on cnn are just fucking playing grab ass behind the scenes and i was just like what the fuck like i thought you guys hated each other i it literally felt like i felt like a kid who suspected that wrestling was fake but like yeah. finally saw it with my own two eyes and i was like this is nasty andre the giant is hugging hulk what's yeah. going on like i don't know i just like it really like they love fame it truly is hollywood for ugly people like it's just they love fame yeah i do think um the like that thing of like in the green room we're friends is like disgusting and very real yeah. we're fighting like we were he came in and i was just like saying hateful slurs to him <laughs> yeah no it, yeah. and like but now we're well, this is an opposite situation we yeah. <laughs> fucking cannot even communicate outside of when the mics are on <laughs> yeah. uh, but like i do think that the trump years kind of caused some people to question that at least a bit like this idea of like i don't know i think there are plenty of fame seeking power seeking grifters who would treat kellyanne conway with respect and like like she's just a normal part of politics that's absolutely true but i do think there are plenty of people who would have been kind to bush people uh or george or hw bush people or mccain people who wouldn't do that with kellyanne conway i do think i don't think enough but i Mm. do think that like I do think, and I don't think that necessarily was even right. I just think the Trump years caused certain people to be like, wait, hold on a second. Maybe I am, (laughs) maybe I have been uh, treating this like a game. See, what I want from those people who recognize that for the Trump people to also do that to the Bush people. Bully the Bush administration (laughs) officials, okay? They should be in prison, not on MSNBC, not on fucking CNN. They should literally be in prison. I do think that's like, one of the darkest lessons of the last four years, which is like, oh, a lot of people who found Trump and Trump's people to be beyond the pale, your issue is manners. Like, yeah. You want the genteel well, version it's of It's not this. the policy or the war crimes it's manners. or any of that. It's the, yeah. DC is a manners play. You want, this is sense and sensibility to you. And yeah. someone was rude, rude to you in a kind of existential way. Yeah. Um, but liberals, war, or liberals, unfortunately, are like, both jurisprudence and also uh, procedural fetishists. They love like civility. It's the lack of civility from the Trump administration that's the most offensive thing because you're 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 destroying the integrity of this government that we've built up that is supposed to do good for the people. And it's like, no, I, I it's not just the civility that is a problem. And actually, as a matter of fact, I feel like that that uh, uh, 
civility seeking behavior in a lot of instances or like the the uh, we got to do everything right by the book and, and follow procedures that liberals oftentimes engage in that Republicans never ever in a million years give a fuck about and have never cared about that sometimes absolutely leads to the destruction of the integrity of those very same institutions like you don't play dirty at all as as democrats and then you let republicans play dirty and then when they do that you destroy the integrity of the institution to begin with so sometimes you just got to fucking fight back a little bit I, i yeah i mean i remember like I remember in the weeks between Trump winning in 2016 and Trump taking office, like I, I felt like it was this strange moment where I was just sort of like getting stoned or like getting drunk and then talking on the phone with people I'd never met before, but just knew from Twitter or whatever. Like, and I remember like all I was thinking, I had these sort of two giant fears and one was that, okay, in a situation when you have like rising fascistic right-wing movements what happens on the left and what happens on the left is chaos and infighting Mm. uh, because there is there is panic there is um you know blame there is uh um uh, you know exhaustion there is just a sense of like defeat and that leads to kind of the movement itself collapsing and people seeing themselves as enemies saying like you're the reason this happened no you're the reason this happened and so i was really worried about that like how do we keep this big you know, center left to left wing coalition together just for a bit to defeat this, defeat this. And the other piece of it too is like, there is this vice grip that has happened historically when you see the rising of like right wing autocratic regimes, which is how do you, how do you show people that the game is worth playing by the book, by the rules while playing someone who doesn't follow the rules? Like when do you, when, like, when do you kind of to protect these institutions play as dirty as they do and when do you actually have to say like no we're going to do this according to the rules of the game because we're also trying to we're not just trying to win we're trying to trying to prove that this is a game worth playing like democracy is a game worth playing and i don't think anyone has easy answers for that um but i do think like there is a balance you have to think about like how do you defeat these people without totally destroying the system and the institutions uh uh, I, I don't really care about the rules if we're being honest. I yeah. think that I, I mean, a big part of what I believe in is, is external pressure beyond, um, beyond like the, the game of politics. I think like building coalitions and, and so, actual grassroots movements, um, backed by and, and, uh, created by the working class is, is a fundamental part of a, a working democracy. And I feel like that's very hard to do here in the United States. I think I think that's right. I think you need to do. I think that's absolutely right. You need to kind of build that outside pressure. And to me, what makes the way that I think about like how do you do, balance that between like kind of upholding these institutions and just preserving them against a, a, a fascist threat is I think the biggest mistakes that the institutionalists have made in the last five years maybe like. The mistakes that caused all of this was not was when 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 people, whether it's James Comey, now uh, Garland, uh, Supreme Court justices from the left, when they are more concerned with the appearance of following the rules than actually upholding the rules. So whether that's prosecuting Trump or a host of other ways, like or Comey and what he did right before the election, like these were people so buffeted so kind of abused by right-wing talking points so kind of victimized and so like weak that they were so that they wanted to be like no 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 we're going to show that these are nonpartisan institutions by actually not doing what's right and not actually even really following the rules yeah. and just by trying to prove that we're we're reasonable and as a result we're going to kind of lay down our weapons like, like unilaterally yeah well to be fair uh to the democrats which is not something i do uh regularly but uh of course, it's always an uphill battle for progress and progressive movements in this country. You're fighting against uh, the power of capital, which uh, is always going to be slanted against the working class and for the interests of wealthy, you know, corporations, businesses, all that sort of stuff. And that absolutely favors the evisceration of the federal government, this like, you know, Reagan era idea or neoliberalism in general. Um, 
it, that, it, that is relatively easy to get away with in a country where there's not a lot of confidence in the federal government to do the right thing. And the more you starve the beast, the easier it gets to continue tax cuts, like continue advocating for tax cuts. And to counter that is very difficult. And you need to, one, be honest and, and uh, absolutely advocate for like these right values. But two, you have to do that in a system that churns out a lot of, you know, Joe Manchin style people. Uh, the reality is like there are, uh, you know, there are a lot of incredible progressive people within the Democratic Party and that movement is growing within the Democratic Party. But, you know, for every AOC or Ilhan Omar, there's like, you know, you have Joe Manchin and then you have uh, eight other like moderates on uh, a lot of issues that also will quietly oppose uh, in increasing the minimum wage of $15 an hour uh, because they don't really care about the constituencies, but rather care more about the real constituencies that they have within the corporate lobby, commerce, that sort of thing. I'm saying it, dude. Been drinking pre-workout already. I've been I'm ready to run through a brick wall, baby.